A key characteristic of amphiboles is that they have 60-120 degree cleavage. This is a horn blend, and it shows that this is an end section, so it shows that 60-120 cleavage. In a second, we're going to split to another amphibole. This one is gedrite. Again, it's an end section, and you can see the 60-120 cleavage. So this is something I'm always looking for. Not every amphibole crystal will be oriented in such a way to see the cleavage, but it's something to look out for. Here is some glaucophane. This shows some nice blue to purple pleochroism also. We'll come to that later. But some of these grains are end sections, and you can see the 6120 cleavage. Now, this is not 6120 cleavage. I know it looks like this, but this is actually a clinopyroxene. I can tell this in part because it's got higher relief than amphiboles. And it has essentially 9090 cleavage, but it's been cut in an angle. So this is an actual end section. So you can see essentially 9090 cleavage. But you can imagine that if you cut this prism at an angle, so it wasn't perfectly perpendicular to see, you might get some other angle. So here, it's, you can tell it's not really 6120 and it's not really 9090, and that's because it's cut at a slight angle. So you got to be careful about clinopyroxene versus amphiboles. Cleavage and relief make a difference. So maybe at this point you're saying to yourself, okay, Matt, I go to a thin section, I look at it, I see stuff in there that kind of looks like maybe it's amphibole, but I'm not quite positive. How do I really be sure, because I don't see clear amphibole cleavages right here. So what I do is I look around the section until I find a grain that is, it looks like an end section, but is in a part of the section that is not made very well. If we zoom in on this particular grain, right here, and then we go to higher magnification, now you're going to see it has 6120 cleavage, but it's also part of the section that was not made very well. So that's one trick to finding these cleavages. An important discriminator of amphiboles is whether they have inclined versus parallel extinction. There's a whole set of orthoamphiboles that have parallel extinction and clinoamphiboles that have inclined extinction. This is hornblende. You can see that it has inclined extinction, so the long axis of the grain is at an angle to the crosshairs, either north-south or east-west, when it goes extinct. That's characteristic of a clinoamphibole. The color of the crystal tells me that it's hornblende. This is actinolite, another clinoamphibole, pale green pleochroism. And what you'll see when I cross the polars is that it too has inclined extinction. There are two grains there that are close to the center that show that. If you notice when I crossed the pol polars and they were parallel to the crosshairs, they were not extinct. That's a simple way to test. This is coming tonight. Coming tonight is another clinoamphibole. So as I cross, cross the polars, you'll see it has inclined extinction. Uh, the domains are black when they are not parallel to the crosshairs. Coming tonight also has twinning, that's another way to tell, but otherwise it's colorless, just like anthophyllite. So that's how you tell the difference between coming tonight and anthophyllite. They're both colorless, but one has inclined extinction and the other has parallel extinction. Now this is gedrite, this is an inclusion inside garnet. It has some pleochroism, that's one way we tell that it's gedrite. But what you'll see is that when the Cleavage planes, which are those thin lines running east-west, are parallel to the crosshairs, then it is extinct. Again, an orthoamphibole. This is anthophyllite. Anthophyllite is another orthoamphibole. It's colorless. You can see it's a long, skinny crystal. And when I cross the polars and it's parallel to the crosshairs, you'll see that it too is black. So this is gedrite. It is gray at pleochroic, 
so darker running east-west than north-south, so normal pleochroism. And after I cross the polars, you will see that it has parallel extinction right there. This is fairly commonly what people think of for hornblende, brown, pleochroic. This one is an end section, so you can see the 6120 cleavage to it. There are not many minerals that have this brown color. Biotite is the only other one that's pretty common, and biotite has bird's eye extinction and wouldn't have this amphibole type cleavage. I put this in here to show some of the different colors that hornblende can have in plain polarized light. Dark green to sort of yellowish to bluish green. When I cross the polars, you'll see the elongated green has inclined extinction. In an earlier video, we saw that glaucophane has blue to lavender pleochroism, and you can see that among these different grains here. But it also, depending on the orientation, can be sort of a yellowy green color. Across the polars, typical amphibole moderate interference colors. In some rocks, more than one amphibole will coexist. This one is complex grains that have actinolite cores and hornblende rims. The actinolite cores are pale green, very slightly pleochroic. They're also a little bit brighter in their interference colors than the hornblende. So the hornblende is more of a darker green to olive green. The actinolite is a light green to sort of apple green in plain polarized light. And here's another example of coexisting amphiboles. This has a hornblende core and a coming tonight rim. A lot of times coming tonight and hornblende will coexist, and then you can tell the difference because they have different pleochroism. Also, the coming tonight tends to be twinned. You see some twins on this, and the hornblende doesn't show that.